Yeah, next time you come, I'm gonna have a video game or something. Hell yeah. I'm shit, whatever. We'll be on some uh, Mario Kart and shit. Oh, come play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of rusty on it, right? I haven't played it. Ooh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. I'm with um, and welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jay Vaz, and you're watching the Jay Vaz Show, music and entertainment at its finest. And as always, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other streaming services. And if you're listening to us on these streaming services and you want to watch the video of this and all of our other interviews, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find the link of all these um you can find all these links on the description of the podcast and the description of the YouTube channel as well. Uh, we got a special guest with us today. Uh, we've had him before. He's a returning guest. He was he first joined us when we were outside of Clicks before we even got a studio way back in the day. And uh, we appreciate him then. We appreciate him now. Castro, Escobar, what's up, man? What up, homie? What's up, right. bro? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Everything good, man. Everything good. How you I'm, feeling? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Appreciate you having me back over here, man. Yeah, no, I, pre- I appreciate you coming out here, man. I know you stay, you know, a l- little bit out there. Yeah, about an hour. It about ain't hour. it ain't too bad. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm, I'm used to the I'm used to those drives. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah. Um, hold on. Well, let me ask you this: You stay in? I always get these confused. Bay City or Bay Town? Nah, not Bay City or Bay Town. Oh I stay- shit! <laughs> <laughs> I stay next to Bay City. It's uh, it's Brazoria County. Brazoria County. Brazoria County. Yeah, it's right. It's right underneath uh, Houston. Like it starts in Pearland, I think. I'm not even sure. I just know my little area of yeah. the county, you know what I'm saying? So when you get down to Pearland, you keep going down and you reach like Rochelle, Angleton, and you know, I'm right next to Angleton. I'm between Angleton, it's Angleton, West Columbia, and then it's Bay City, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Bay City, shout out Angleton, shout out a whole bro, uh, Brazoria County, you know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, I stay down there. So I'm, I'm next to Bay City pretty much. Okay. You know, I'm like... 20 minutes away from Bay yeah. City. Yeah. yeah, this whole time I thought you were in one of the bays. I was like, he's in Bay City or Bay Town, one of them. Nah, nah. I'm from I'm from the dub, man, West Columbia. Country boy. Country yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, last time I saw you, and I and I was, you know, even when we talked about it before the camera, I was debating on when, when was the last time I saw. I can't remember if the last time I saw you was at Centro Popular or when you were doing the music video. But we'll talk about both of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just gonna assume last time I saw you was it's Centro Popular. Yeah, it was. It was, it was right. Because we performed a song that we did the video to in the, on the South. Um, the South. Yeah. Yeah. We recorded it, and then we performed it in the Centro Popular. Yeah. So. Okay. So last time I saw you was then. But mm-hmm. let's talk about uh, first time I had saw you in fucking, I don't know, four or five years since we did the interview. Maybe yeah, th- maybe two or three. I don't know. Maybe yeah, it- no, it was like what? When did we do the interview? Like 2019? I've had a studio right. for three years now, so. 2018? 20. So I think at the Somewhere end of 2018 or early 2019. I remember I had. I'm, I'm surprised you I remember because like you were drunk. It was. It was. It was uh, I was hungover. I was. Hungover. You, was you were hungover. I was yeah, still yeah. drunk. Yeah, I was still drunk. So yeah, you can say I was drunk. But now I think it was. Um, I think no, I think it was like two years ago. Yeah. I think it was like around August of 2019, if I'm not mistaken. I think so because I had just. It came. was in the summer for sure. Yeah, I, I, I had. Um, I was out here for. Yeah, I think it was around. It has to be. It was August 2019. Yeah. Or uh, July. July or August. One of those two. Because I had just did the... I had just uh, headlined the Slum Fest. That's uh, right. Shout out to Slum. Sh- yeah. Shout out to Slum Sessions, man. Yeah. Um. So that, that was the last... That was the first time I've seen you since then. It was at the South Music Video Shoot. I was supposed to be wearing XB shirt. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wear mine. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to XB, though. Shout out to XB, man. You know, uh, dope ass artist. She's got a new single that came out like... um. By the time this comes out, two weeks ago, with GT Garza, and then you can also check out the other single that she's got, Low Key, with Paul Wall, and Forgiveness, I think, is the other single that she's got with uh, Bone Thugs. Shouts out to, to her, and make sure you check out her music. But uh, it was her music video. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, she's got this single with you called The South. South, And, yeah. you know, I, I saw you guys doing the video shoot. Uh, I had previously heard the song, mm-hmm. and I was like, your verse was so fucking dope. Appreciate it, like, man. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Spanish rap now. Right. Like I, I transitioned from English rap to Spanish rap. Right. So when I, I feel heard, like, I feel like every, I don't mean to cut you out, but I feel like a lot of people are kind of, you know, embracing that now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think because, and then we'll get back to the what I was trying to say. But I, to me, it was because I got tired of listening to today's rap in yeah. English, and when I heard the Spanish rap, it was like a, it was refreshing, refreshing, exactly. 100. And it felt like there's a lot more. Deep messages behind Spanish rap now mm-hmm. than 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 the English rap. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? Because English rap is all about jewelry, females, and that. Yeah. Unless you really dig into some artists, well, you, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so when I heard the Spanish rap and they were talking about struggles in the barrio and shit, I was like, bro, dope. this is dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've listened <laughs> to a lot of uh, Santa Fe clan and Hit Am. You listen to Spanish rap at all? Man, if, if I, if, 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 I'm not... I don't follow certain like uh, particular artists that does Spanish, but if I hear it, man, I'll, I'll you know what I'm saying. Of course, you know Carteles Hanta, you know yeah. uh, uh, the 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 ones that you know the typical uh, the OGs, or, or the, yeah, the OGs. My bad, I didn't mean to say typical. The OGs, yeah. you know. But um, do I dig in there like that? Not not really, you know what I'm saying. Um, but when I do hear it, when it pops up on my YouTube, you know, what yeah. I'm saying? I, I definitely click it. And yeah, um, it's. I don't know how the hell I ended. Oh, I was listening to Celso Pina. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I was just jamming and saying, working out. Yeah, yeah. rest in peace, Celso Pina. And then he, a song came out called Que Chulas Mi Ciudad. And uh -huh. it was with this guy named Hera MX. Uh -huh. And he's a Spanish rap. And ever since then, I've you been on his been shit. Jam. And everybody that collabs with him, and you I find. Just, you just, you start yeah. going into the rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. See, I haven't, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I haven't, that hasn't happened to me yet. You know, if I hear something or, 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 or if it pops up or anything like that, like, I'll click it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it hasn't happened to me where it's like, Yo, this right here, you know what I'm saying, and then just like I just start going, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, of course, it's it's all dope from what I've heard. You know um, what I'm saying? So I say all that to say this. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard your verse and you were talking about, uh, damn, let me see if I can remember the lines. Maybe not verbatim, but the part that I like was when you said, "Tu, tu mamá te dijo que eh, um, um, something about hasta Dios en, uh, Dios en no con Judas, yeah. no, no todos que te juntas yeah, son tus yeah, amigos." Yeah. Was, like, what was it? Um, my mama used to tell me. Ten cuidado con quien te juntas. El diablo nunca duerme y hasta Dios se no con Judas. Fíjate en los que te ayudan y también los que te juzgan. Ten pendiente en esa gente porque pura no hay ninguna. Yeah. So it was just like, you know, my mom, my mom, that was one thing that my mom always used to tell me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I always remember it. She always would be like, El diablo nunca duerme. El yeah. diablo nunca, like, pretty much, like, always, like, watch out. You know what I'm saying? Because. You know, you never know when something or someone is up to ain't no good or when somebody just has a change of feelings or a change of heart or, you know, in any situation, you know, you think that you're good or, and then something, you know, so just kind of like, you know, el diablo yeah. nunca verme, so she always used to tell me that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's crazy how her parents had these deep fucking, uh... Messages. Or messages. Like, yeah. Now you have these people talking about, sheesh, like, what the fuck is yeah. that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause, cause my, my dad would always tell us, too, it's like, caras vemos, corazones no sabemos. So it's right. like, you, you see somebody acting a certain way, but you, you don't know, know their, their intentions, intentions, man. Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So it's, it's about the same message, but yeah, the, our parents always had some some deep. And it's and it's crazy because, you know, I used to hear it so, 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 so frequently that it was just kind of like, it, it was just looked as like kind of like a, I, at one point, I was just like, ah, oh, she's she's just saying stuff, you know? Yeah. And then it's, it's just like whenever, like, I really started seeing, like, you know, things change or somebody, you know, you, you and this person ain't cool no more, shit like that, I was like, yo, this is the type of shit she was talking yeah. about. You know what I'm saying? And fuck, I mean, that was back when I was in high school and middle school, you know what I'm saying? So, like, of course, like, as I got older and shit, like... I experienced, you know, I've been through a lot of a lot of shit, and and I seen and and, and I seen it with my own eyes, and I'm like, damn, like it's, my mom was telling me this shit since I was, you know, yeah, you, high, kid, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So. And, and before the world evolved to what it is now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because because shit is a lot crazier now in a oh, way. Oh hell yeah, you know what man. I mean? Um, hell yeah. It's it's crazy that well, it's crazy and it's sad that we have to get older to realize our parents were right the whole time. Hell yeah. I try to bro. tell these to my nephews and my nieces. I was like, hey, because you know they're teenagers right now. Uh, and they talk to me, but it's like, you're supposed to be talking to your parents about this, not me. You know what I mean? But then I do tell them, I was like, hey, wait, pero cuida tu papá y tu mamá, güey, porque no, no son para siempre. Right. You know what I'm saying? And obviously they're like, but they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, no. But they, they know, they exactly know what, what they're, they're talking, talking about. about. But that, I mean, I guess, I, I, I feel like that's kind of cool, though. Like, not 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 kind of, like, I feel like it's, it's not bad. Uh, it, it, for them to come to you and talk yeah. about, maybe they feel more comfortable with you. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying, which is which is dope as fuck because I wish I would have had that. But I'm the oldest, you know. I'm yeah. the oldest of four, and you know what I'm saying. Me, me and my pops, like you know, I appreciate my pops for everything that he's ever done. You know, because he's he's always worked. You know, I've never had to sleep in the street or like you know, uh, I always had a you know, I, there was always food, there was always a roof over my head. You know, but me and him don't really have that relationship, and, I, and we never did. You know, so I always you know. I, I, I'm the oldest, and my my parents they were both like my dad is the youngest, and my mom is like the third to the youngest, and my mom's got like my mom has like ten brothers, so it's like all my cousins and, and shit like they're all way older than me, so I really didn't have a 
somebody older to talk to or anything yeah. like that, you know, but I, I wish that I would have, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it would have helped me way more. You know, I had to learn a lot of shit for myself, but for them to come to you and talk to you, man, I, I feel like that's, you know, I, I think that that's, that's dope. Even though, like you say, like they should talk to their parents because yeah. their parents tell them stuff, but it's kind of like maybe they feel more comfortable. You and know what and they do. And I think the simple fact is, well, first I want to say it's crazy that you feel like that because you're the oldest and I feel the same way, but because I'm the youngest. I feel like I couldn't go to my brothers because they were like, don't save his way, that's chiquillo. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I couldn't open up to them because I felt like they would be looking at me like, what the hell do you know? Yeah, you, yeah. You're way younger. Yeah. But but yeah, to, uh, as far as my uh, you know my nephews coming to me and, and talking to me about stuff, it's kind of like they know me since I was their age. Okay. In a way, if that makes any sense. You, they, they know you since you were their age. So I was 15 when they were born. Now that they're 15, I'm 30. Oh, okay, 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 so okay, okay. It's okay. like they feel that connection with me because in their head, I'm like young to them. Like, I mean, I'm 34. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. in their head, they feel like maybe I can relate to them more yeah. than their parents that are 40, 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, you know I, what I'm saying? What like, like, so they've they known exactly me since I was their age. Like, right. I've been 15, and they're like, oh, well, he knows exactly what we're going through because we saw him go through it. Even yeah. even though it was 15 years ago, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. sometimes I, that's that's what I take out of it. I was like, yeah, maybe that's that's what it is. Right. But uh, but yeah, man. Um, so yeah, the South. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know how the fuck we got to this part of talking <laughs> about my nephew. <laughs> no, it's good, man. It's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm with anything, man. But uh, but yeah, the South was uh, the single that came out. Uh, I believe it was in August. You guys put this out uh, uh, or late Ju- late July? No, it was late July. Late July. Late July. It was, I think, a week before the um the, the festival. Popular. Yeah, the festival. Yeah. So. Um. So yeah, the South featuring uh featuring you from XB Valentine, mm. and again your verse on there was dope as fuck. Uh, Thank w- you, man. W- when I heard it, I heard it like two weeks before it was released. Shout out to Smooth Vega. Shout uh, out to Smooth Vega. <laughs> and I was like, bro, this shit is dope. And then I saw it on your on your Instagram. Yeah. And and I think you you when you were recording it, maybe it was. When I was recording, when oh, whenever we uh, recording the video. No, 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 no. You played it. Oh, oh, yeah, cause my 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 boy uh, Eric, he he always tells me he's doing time, and he always tells me he's like, man, when you're in the studio, man, Facetime, cause you know there's apps now that you yeah. can like, you know. So I I did a a, a video call with, with with him, and I was showing him the verse, and that's what I that's what I put on my um on my Instagram when I was in the yeah. studio. You talking about when I was in the studio? When you were in the yeah, studio, yeah. and you played the song, I was like, yeah. hey, this shit this shit coming out nice. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you this: Was that the first song or the first verse you recorded? Since your break from music, or or was this just the one, the first one that we heard? I guess to the. Nah, it was one of the. Um, I wrote that man. I wrote that. Um, I think like in late June, probably a month before it came out. But um, the first song that I ever that I wrote whenever I, I took my you know I, I left social media and everything was um, Eric's Wisdom, which I had put out on YouTube. I didn't really promote it or anything. I just yeah. I, had, I had to put it out, you know, and um, that was the first one. Um, and even even while I was you know on my little break, I was, man, I was writing a lot, man. I actually mo- most of my most of my music that I have now in the vault, man, I, I got about I want to say about ten to fifteen tracks, man. They're ready to go, you yeah. know. So I was I was a uh, I was writing a lot, you know, while I was um you know uh, uh away. When you were from, taking a break, you take, really weren't taking a break. I mean, it was, I was, uh, it was a break from from the world, you know. I was away from social media. I had disconnected from everything so i really didn't know what was going on you know and man it just made me look at the world way different you know yeah but um but yeah that 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 it wasn't my my first one was eric's wisdom so um yeah go go check out eric's wisdom man that's very deep was that so that wasn't the one you put a music video on huh when you have the the mexican bandana no 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 that's um never alone that's because you put that one out right after, before you started coming yeah, all, all the back. way in onto yeah. social media, Yeah, that right? was like, I think I dropped that in May. I think it was, yeah, it's the only music video that I've dropped yeah. after, you know, after uh, I came back from social media. So that was the second one I dropped. And then the third thing that I dropped was uh, the feature with, um, with XB. Uh, XB Valentine. And I told her, too, I was like, man, I, 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 I gave you a good verse. Like, I usually, you know what I'm saying, I kind of do, do my thing on my verses, but I put some personal shit yeah. in there, you know. And I even told her, and I told Smooth, I was like, hey, man, my next mixtape, I'm putting this song on there. They was like, go ahead, put it on there. I was like, all right, cool, because <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with it, you know. And, of course, she did her thing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. XB's yeah. dope, man. As a per- even as a person, it's like, it's hard to dislike XB. She's you can't, man. You can't. Very good vibes, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the first time I had ever met her at the South video. 
And just talking to her, it felt like I'd been knowing her for, for Dude, the longest. Bro, you ain't lying, bro. <laughs> you ain't lying. Like, you can't, you know, like you said, like, I don't think that there's anybody out there that does not not like her, you know? Yeah, I mean? and if you don't like XB, you just you fucking hater. weird. Yeah, yeah fuck you, you hate her. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. No, um, so yeah, we're talking about this break that you took for music. Mm-hmm. Um, so then again, Centro Popular, that was your first time hitting the stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you did say it on on, on on record. You say it's my first time being on stage since since my break. Right. Uh, talk to us about what that was like. Like Initially, getting on stage, the thought of being on stage again for the first time, what, what was the feeling like? Just what, what was the mood like getting back on stage after the break? Well, I had to drive up there to Fort Worth from down here. So I left that morning around 9, 8, 8-ish. To get there like at one thirty or two, you know, because it started at two or two thirty, something like that. I don't, I don't really remember. And um, as I was driving up there, you know, um, I was just thinking, like, I was writing. I had me a little coffee, you know what I'm saying? I was writing. I was, I was, I was excited, and then something just kind of came in my head, and I was just like, "Damn!" Like I'm riding in this bitch by myself. Like I'm really riding out. Like I'm driving five and a half hours. To perform in this motherfucking stage, I'm gonna be on stage by myself. Like, you know, I've, I, you know, when I'm performed, even even when I first started, like, out here, like, you know, back, back here in B County, you know, I always had the homies or EC next to me or whatever, yeah. you know. And I'm like, man, I'm riding, you know, I'm riding out here by my, not even just that, but it's just like, yo, if I get into a scuffle, like, just, you know, they they gonna get me yeah. by myself, you know. So then I just got kind of get nervous. I called Vega as soon as I got there. He picked me up, and as soon as we pulled up in the little go kart, like two, three people, they were they, they was in line waiting to get in. Like two, three people, hey, can I take a picture with Castro? Hey, can I take a picture with Castro? Hey, can I take a picture with Castro? And I was just like, bro, I was gone for like damn near yeah. a year, you know what I'm saying? And this was just, you know, these people asking for a picture. Like I was really expecting for nobody to know who the fuck I was, you know what I'm saying? To keep it a thousand with you. So then they kind of like, you know, pumped me up a little bit, and I was like, damn, people actually know who I am, like you know what I'm saying? Like. It, it, in in reality, like I should have expected that, but yeah. in my head of me leaving and just I felt like I like People nobody forgot about exactly, me. Exactly, bro. That was my thing. You know what I'm saying? So we got to the little, you know what I'm saying, to, to the little RVs, the little trailers, whatever we was waiting. Um, I seen Animes out there. Shout out Animes. Shout out Animes. Yeah. And uh, you know she, you know she's like, hey, what's up? Bye bye bye. You know, uh, how you doing? You know, we just chopping it up. And then she was like, yo, I'm about to go on. So you know, I was watching her performance from the side. She did her thing, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, fuck, like, I'm next. Like, I'm getting nervous. And I'm like, yo, like, like. It's, it's not the first time, What the fuck time, are you bro. doing, bro? Like, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like. But I think the thing was is that I was sober. So I I I walked in there and I was just like, that was my first time going on stage, like, really not having anything to drink prior or anything, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that. So I'm just like. Right, so I performed, you know, when I was up there, you know, of course I do I do what I always do. I talk to the crowd, whatever, this and that. But it was just, it felt so different because, like I said, I was sober and, and I would usually perform, like, intoxicated, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, not even just, like, a good buzz, but, like, really, like, which I don't even know how I used to do it, bro. Like, honestly, like, but, you know, after af- afterwards, you know, I, I went out there and uh, I got me some tacos. And uh, what's it got me some? T- well, yeah, hold on, where the hell did they have tacos? Man, at? they had two taco trucks all the way in the back, bro. And they was giving it free to to all the artists and everybody who was like out there. So that damn, I, I, I damn near died out there being hungry. <laughs> nah, bro. So I went out there because why did I go out there? I don't know why I went out there. I went out there for something. And as soon as I got out there, people were just asking for pictures, asking for pictures, and I was like. What the fuck? Like I was tripping. Then people was like, "Yo, bro, like you spitting, like blah blah." Like people that didn't know me yeah, before, the new faces. you know. Yeah. So I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like I still got it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, obviously I'm not. You know I didn't. You know like I said in my head I was just thinking like I can't do this anymore. Like people don't know me anymore. People forgot about me. Like I'm just not. You know. And then out of nowhere this girl comes uh, and she's like, "Hey, you want some tacos?" And I'm like. I look at the tacos truck and I'm like, how much are they? She's like, nah, they free to all the artists. They, uh, you know, they just told me to come over here and tell you. I was like, oh hell yeah! So I go all the way over there, and then um, they give me some fucking badass tacos, dog. The fucking hot sauce, fuck. You know it was hot that day. Oh, so I, yo de pendejo, I fucking let's try madre salsa. I started to eat them, bro. Probably on my fourth one, I had like five of them bitches. My fourth one, I'm like, oh fuck, 
Like I'm, and then I go outside, the sun hit me, and I'm like, oh my god, why'd I do that? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like like pretty much, I was I was hype on my way there, getting there. I was nervous, did it, performed, went out, seen the people's reaction. It just you know it made me feel good again yeah. about it. You know um, what I'm saying? First, I want to say. I wish I would have known they had fucking tacos. <laughs> By the time I realized they had uh, hot dogs, dog, I was shaking and shit. They had hot dogs? They had hot dogs. <laughs> they had With hot dogs. The bacon wrapped hot dog? No. The what? Bacon wrapped hot dogs or just like regular oh, hot no, dogs? Oh, no. Well, yeah, bacon. Oh, bro. It was like this big. And by the time I realized they had those, I was shaking. The lady's like, what all do you want? I said, man, just put anything on it. Yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm ready to eat. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, first that. And second... Uh, one thing that I guess you know uh, is is dope. Uh, it has to be dope for you. Is that we we live now in a time where there's always a new artist popping up, mm-hmm. uh, and we do move on from artist to artist in pretty fast oh, yeah. pace. So the fact that you did take this break and people were still you know showing love, it has to be dope because because oh, yeah, um, again we're always new, we're always ready for the next. Yeah. Like okay, well Castro's gone. Within you figure like within two months people are ready for the next artist yeah and and, and forget about Castro yeah. right and I'm guessing that's what your your mindset was oh when yeah you said. I was when, once I was out for like three for the rest of that year you know um, I had already thought to my head like oh people would you know yeah would, you know because I like I said I didn't keep up with nothing though like I didn't keep up with no nothing like so shit was going shit was happening and shit was going on and and people I would hear people here and there talk about certain things or certain trends and shit and I didn't know I didn't know what yeah. the fuck was going on so. I deactivated everything, and um, you know that 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 was that. You know, you know what they say: the first, what is it, the first step is admitting there admitting is a problem. There's a problem. Yeah, yeah. and that, that that was my thing, man. Like, I I thought that I didn't have a problem. I thought that because it became the norm. It became like you the said, norm. you were so used to yes, bro, to and, being fucked up. And so the, it was just kind of like this is me. <laughs> yeah, and the thing and the thing about it is that seeing uncles and cousins, like I said, we. Uh, my my mom and my dad were like the youngest, so it's like all my cousins are older, and of course my uncles they're yeah. of course older. So my my dad, you know, I, I would see every time there was a get together, every time there was you know somewhere to be or anything. What's every Mexican dad and every uncle and every cousin doing? Drinking, fucking drinking like it's water. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My dad <laughs> after work, like it's water. Boom, boom, just drink it, just. Drinking them bitches down. So I'm thinking, me growing up, I'm thinking my whole life, like, I'm not going to drink like that, you know? Shit, once I turned 19 and started working out in the fucking refineries and in construction, bro. You needed thing, that fucking drink. Give me yeah. that shit, you know what I'm saying? So it just, it be, like you say, it became the norm. And I didn't notice it, you know what I'm saying? Now, I do want to say after my mother's death or right whenever, like, you know, things ha- started happening. Because I have, like, this inner ear disease to where I get, like, vertigo and shit. Uh, once I started having like issues, like real, is- like life issues, like it wasn't just like no kid shit, like it was real shit, like my mom getting sick and everything. I, since I would do it so much, like since it was just the norm, like you say, that's whenever it started to become a problem. You know, I wasn't yeah. drinking to have fun at, you know, downtown Houston or, you know, pull up to LA and okay, let's have a couple of drinks, let's turn up, and then the next day, oh, I'm hungover, and then you know, cut it out till next weekend or two weeks. It wasn't like that for me. For me, it was just kind of like, fuck, I feel sad, fuck, I feel mad, and I really didn't know how to express it. Yeah. So, mm, 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 to black out or to whatever, you know, and and you know, I started to act different, act wild, act um uh uh. Uh, reckless, you know, getting violent with with my family, with my, you know, with with, with my brothers, with my friends, with with everybody around me, and and it's just like, bro, like that's not you, you know, and and you know, when, once I really started to look back and see it, see that, that's whenever I was just like, okay, man, you need to let go of everything, and you need to take this break. So yeah, that's 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 what that's um, what I did. What? How do I say this? What really was like the the spark that was like I need to get the I mean, obviously everything you told me, right. but what made it be like okay I do have a problem, like it's because again obviously you told me you know you had an incident that happened and stuff, right. but was it something that came from a certain person or it was just in general seeing everybody being worried about the situation? I mean it it was like it was it was everybody telling me. You know, and, and I mean, the last thing was just, um, 
I didn't have nowhere to go, man. I had I had I had hit rock bottom, man. If if I'm being uh brutally honest, man, I ain't had no money, I ain't had no car, I ain't have no um I ain't had nowhere to go. I didn't have nothing, bro. I was I've never said this out loud. This is my first time saying it, you know. Um I was at rock bottom and I didn't have nobody. And I just remember on the ride back to where where, where I'm from, the area that I'm from, I had gotten a hotel. And my brothers, my little brothers, they seen me. And, um, you know, the doctor had told me some bad shit. You know, they were like, yo, man, it doesn't look good, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And then, you know, just seeing my youngest, the tiny one, you know, because I'm, I'm the oldest of four. You know, my sister, and then there's my brother, and then the the youngest one, he, he 13. He 13 now. But just seeing him look at me and just, like, kind of, like, confused in a way, you know what I'm saying? But just kind of, like... Not disappointed, but just kind of being like, yo, like, like you're my big bro, you know? Yeah. And of course, like I said, my, my my father, he's, you know, he doesn't have the best relationship. You know, he, he's he's kind of like, you know, in his own little zone and my mother isn't here. And before my mother passed, I remember her telling telling me, you know, like, take care of your brothers. Take care of your brothers and um, have a lot of patience with the little one, you know, because he's growing up without his mom, you know? Yeah. So... I, at that moment, it it like I went prior like three weeks, three months, three years back. Like I remember being with my mom whenever she passed, and you know her giving me that information, and and I'm thinking in my head like, you you you're not doing what you promised. Yeah. You ain't doing what you promised your mom's before she died. So right then and there, that's when I decided kind of like, all right, man, I need to leave this shit. I need to leave all this shit alone. I need to move on. I need to. Think, put myself first because you're just filling in this void of you feeling bad, you feeling sad, you, you you're drinking, you're taking that out on other people, you know. Um, focus on yourself, not and don't focus on yourself by distracting yourself, but try to dig in there and really see what's wrong with Allen. With fuck Castro, you know what I'm saying fuck Castro, fuck fuck Castro Escobar, like Allen, like who you are, what's your problem, what's your issues. You need to help yourself. Nobody's going to help you. You need to help yourself because nobody else can help you at this point. You're the only one who can help you at this point. So then I decided to get help. I took, I, I, I went to therapy, man. And shit, man. Like, I, I mean, I recommend it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I recommend it to a lot of people that are going through something, man. Like, go to therapy. That shit, I, my whole fucking life, I was always like, fuck therapy. I don't need no therapy. Yeah. You know, this mic is my therapy. You know, these lyrics are my therapy. Like, stage is my therapy. You know, this is my therapy. Nah, man. That therapy helps, man. That shit really fucking helps. And, and that, you know, we talked about this before we started recording how being, you know, you know we're both Mexican and, and just in general, right, I think the generation that, that raised us, the, the man that raised us, it, it was more of, you know, somos hombres and stuff, right? And oh, then, yeah. and then it feels like the people growing up now have that mentality that they feel like, soy hombre, yo solo puedo, no yeah. necesito ayuda, yeah. Or, or that well, as soon as as soon as you say, hey, voy con un psiquiatra, si no estoy loco, si no estoy loco, exactly, bro. <laughs> That's the thing. Que tuviera loco, que yeah. que chinga, you know what I'm saying? So it's, you know, everything that I should have been doing since my mom's passing, or since you know, whenever she got sick and and she started really, when I started to notice that change. Fucking what four four years ago, almost five years ago, I should I should have done what I did at that time when I took that break. I should have done that back then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I went a lot of years. I went, you know, I spent a lot of years filling that void with drinking and and doing this and that. You know what I'm saying? And 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 not acting like myself and just talking reckless and being reckless. You know what I'm saying? And and it's, it's because I don't want to blame it on, oh, my dad, you know, my dad and my uncles are like this. No, because yeah. we all have a choice, you know, but you, you become a product of your environment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? You 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 put somebody in uh, uh, South Central L.A., you know, with the Crips, they ain't going to grow up to be a blood. They, he going to be yeah. a Crip. You know what I'm saying? You throw something in, in, in somebody in, in fucking in certain avenue in New York and, and you know, they out there thugging and, and doing this, this and that. They, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 they, can, they can become a businessman and work in Wall Street. Yes, it's possible. Yeah. More than likely, they're going to become a product of the environment. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, with me, that's all I seen, bro. I seen more beer in the fucking fridge than water. 
You know what I'm saying? I recently started drinking water, man. Like, for real. Like, straight up, bro. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I felt like that was just, you know, my dad wouldn't, my dad was only really nice to, to me whenever he was drinking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's very sad to say, and I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm, it's not like I'm talking bad about my father or anything, but it's, it's, it's true, you know? And, and to me, it was just kind of like, oh, it's enhancing his being nice, you know? So in my head, it was just like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm writing. Uh, I'm getting kind of, I don't know what to write this next line. Okay. Maybe it'll enhance this. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, f- I feel sad. And I drink. Maybe it'll make me feel better. But really, that shit was just fucking me up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or fuck, like, I need to calm down. I need a drink. And then next thing you know, I'm fucking drunk, getting fucking mad. And when, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, it, my first thought was, whenever I first really, whenever it started, you know, Becoming a problem was just kind of like, this is going to help me. It has yeah. to help me, you know? It's my way out. It's going to help me. But really, that shit was just fucking me up, you know? So seeing seeing my little brother, you know what I'm saying, just kind of, you know, look at me, kind of in shock, kind of like, bro, like, like really, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what the fuck? Like, kind of like, you know, I'm yeah. his big brother, you know? Really made me change everything, you know? And then, I, of course, I started spending a lot more time with them. I started knowing them. I started guiding them towards a better direction and... You know, I'm, I'm. It was very unfortunate, you know, the situation that happened, but I'm, I'm glad it did because it really helped me be better and it helped me become closer to them because, you know, and taking care of them, of course, because that's what I had promised my mom's, you know, before she passed. So, yeah, yeah, man. It's it, it's man like stuff like this always gets me because it's like it's sad that something like this has to happen for us to realize. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Because because you know, for for us as a family. The, the passing of my brother had to happen before we realized how we thought we were close. We weren't. Right. And then when he passed, it made us become, you know, closer. So it, it's, it sucks, but then I'm glad that it happened before it got too late. Right. You know, it, you know, to, to you in, in your case that you were able to snap out of it. And now you're able to set that example for your brothers. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, and, and, man. and now, uh, you know, not, you're no longer being selfish, just thinking about Castro. Oh no, nah, man! You're thinking about, yeah. Hey, how am I affecting you know my my, my e- brothers? Exactly. How is that going to affect their future? Exactly. Because you know, ten years from now, if you kept up with what you were doing, who are you to go to them and be like, "Hey, we're not Thomas." Yeah. Why not? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> that's know? that's what I'm saying. Like just seeing the youngest one, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it, man, he's he's just like me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like you know my my, my little brother, my little sister she's very calm very nonchalant you know she's minding her business just yeah. not, not really out there on social media like that nothing you know my little brother he's the same way he likes sports he's very quiet he likes you know his little anime you know uh, stuff you know he's just very to himself but that young one man that young one shit he got yeah. a mouth on him man he got a mouth on him I had to put him in boxing and everything I was like bro you can't talk shit and not know how to fight man like, you <laughs> know what I'm saying like you either gotta not talk shit or you gotta learn how to throw some fucking hands because yeah. that mouth gonna get you in trouble it man it comes with it yeah. oh yeah so it, it, you know they both connect oh yeah um, so yeah w- one thing that, that I that I did wanna um, discuss is with, with all of this mm-hmm. it's, it's something that you, that you mentioned earlier about you know being able to write and I feel like Music has become a lot of artists' diaries, and, and you hear it in, in their music. Um, but then I guess it gets to the point where just expressing yourself isn't enough mm-hmm. to let these emotions and feelings that, that we have inside, right? Um, so that, you know, when you said that, it caught my attention. But but what I mainly wanted to talk about is when you talk about a therapist, and, and again, not to get too into detail of what you went through with, with them, and not, you're basically talking to a person, right? To somebody. Right. So... As somebody that has never been through this, I'm just curious to know what's the difference between, let's say, you talking to the therapist next door than to you talking to your best friend. Right. So the the thing, the big difference is your best friend is sometimes going to tell you what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Not in every occasion, but then you got to realize your best friend, you've known him for years. You know this and that. So even if they do tell you what you need to hear, it's just going to be like... Whatever. Or or sometimes it may be like, you're right, you're right. But it, it's going to kind of be like, oh, he's my friend anyways. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's how I see it. Because once you go to a therapist, it's kind of like, first of all, you got to want to, you got to want to go, you got to want to go to make a change or to, you know, whatever, whatever you're trying to do, you got to want it before you go to a therapist. Now, if you don't want it, don't go. Because yeah. you're going to waste money and you're going to waste time. 
You're going to waste your money and you're going to waste your time. You ain't going to waste their time. They, they still going to get paid. Yeah, yeah, they get paid. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to waste your money and your time if you don't want to make a change. So me sitting down and go, going up there, first thing they told me, first thing she told me was, why are you here? What do you want out of this? And it kind of caught me like off, like, you know, because I'm walking in there. She's obviously seen how I'm looking. She didn't ask me, are you okay? She didn't ask me, are you fine? What happened? But no, she's like, why are you here? So it was just kind of like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't expect that. You know, I expect yeah. that, you know, because you go to your best friend's house and you're like, I need to talk. You know, I said, oh, shit, what happened, bro? You know what I'm saying? So it kind of threw me off and I was like, okay, why am I here? So I'm like, I'm here because I want to be okay. She's like, well, what do you mean? Like, explain to me. Blah, blah. I'm like, I want to be able to to be alone and be okay. I want to be able to not want anymore. I want to be able to to commit to myself, to to love myself, to 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 um, you know, uh, uh, stay disciplined to myself, to 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 be better for me, so I can be better for people around me. And then she just started, you know, it went from there, you know, and she she started asking me about my childhood, about, you know, growing up, how I act, you know, whatever. And of course, like, you just get real deep, deep in there. She digs in there, or they dig in there. And um, one thing is, uh, it's kind of like you start to realize issues that you've never really thought about. They, they were always there in front of you, but you, you kind of just lay them down or put them on a board and, and you're just like, Oh shit! Like I've been doing this my whole life, and I yeah. thought it was okay, or I thought this was normal, or I thought that you know. And right there, you realize a lot of things, man. So, that like like I mentioned about the the whole drinking thing, man. I, I thought that that shit was normal, bro. For a long time, I thought that We're a creatures lot of, of habit. Yeah, you know and and it's just like the things that I seen in my household for the longest, bro. Till I was like, till I left when I was nineteen, you know. I thought. A lot of that shit, which I don't want to mention out here, but I, I thought that a lot of the shit that happened in my house was normal. What's going on in everybody else's yeah, house? And, and, yeah, and, you know, whenever I would go to my friend's house, you know, or, or my homeboy's house, and I would see, you know, the same situation, I'd be like, I'd be like, what the fuck? Why isn't this happening how it's happening in my house? Or by now, shit would have went left in this, in my house. Like, how are they still good? Or how is his mom still good and his dad still good? Or how is... Like what the fuck? Like how do these like how do y'all motherfuckers take trips? Like how do y'all go to this place That's or crazy. Chuck E. Cheese's? You know? That's crazy. And I'm just thinking that like I'm in my head. I'm like, you know, like trips to here or road trips or this and that. I'm thinking that that shit's just in movies. You know? I'm thinking yeah. that, I'm looking at that shit like it's Disney World. You know? And then I have homeboys. You know, friends in fourth, fifth grade. You know, like oh, we went here this summer. We went. Everybody's telling me stories, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I'm stuck at the fucking house playing video games. Like, my dad takes the fucking Nintendo thinking, away from thinking me. Thinking I'm living my best yeah, life. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, every other day it'd be hell, you know? So it's just kind of like, I'd always just look at all my friends and homies and just be like, damn, bro, like, you living life. Like, damn, bro, it's so cool that, you know, you get to do this with your family. You know, because in my my house, it was, like, I don't want to make make it seem like, oh, you had it so rough or, oh, you, you know, because everybody, everybody has. You know, there's yeah. somebody that would have loved to live my life at that point. Yeah. But it's just growing, growing up and in, 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 in my house, I, I thought that what was going on in there was just what everybody else had in their house. And, and it wasn't and it wasn't like that. And I know. completely understand, because on the other side of the coin, I remember hearing the first time one of my friends saying their parents were divorced. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, what the fuck? How are your parents not together, bro? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was shocking hearing it. I yeah. was like, so your mom and your dad don't live together? And they're like, nah. You're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what is this? You, again, you start just... My household was like this. Yeah. So I completely understand when you're talking. Like I said, the other side of the coin, but... I was just as shocked when I heard somebody tell me their parents weren't together. I was like, that that that, that can that happen? Happens? Yeah. You know what, I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's crazy as it sounds. Yeah. And then I remember, I mean, and, and I'm on record, I've always told people, you know, especially on camera when I talk, you know, I, I had a, a obviously there was, there was issues here and there, right? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I lived a good life. You know right. what I mean? Um, both of my parents were together until my dad recently passed, uh, but they were always together. Uh, they always gave us like the best life, and even even when you know, recently when I told my dad, 
if he would do anything different because of what he used to do. Right. He's like, well, you got to think about it. I didn't have a mom to tell me any different. He's like, my dad was drinking. He's like, so who was going to tell me that I was doing wrong? He's like, I was trying to give y'all a better life than the one I was giving. Right. He's like, and I think I did, but I didn't go the right way about it. He's right. like, but my, who was going to tell me, hey, you, this that you're doing? Kind of like be like, hey, man. Like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, and by the time somebody told me, he's like, I was like 20-something. So who the hell were they to tell me? When I've lived my whole life out of this, you know what yeah. I mean. So, so yes, it's we're creatures of habit. Um, and I remember one time, because my dad, you know, growing up, my dad wasn't around as much. And this goes to what you just said, as far as you seeing people like, oh shit, y'all take trips? Yeah. Like, man, I want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, I had everything that I wanted: video games, toys, everything. And I remember one time we went to go visit my cousins, right? And I come out. I see my my uncle playing football with them, throwing oh, the ball shit. with them and shit. You know, like playing the. I remember, I, I asked my mom, I was like, "Ma, por qué papi no juega con nosotros así?" Yeah. And she's like, "Es que tu papi no está, mijo." I was like, and I remember, I was like, "Cómo me gustaría que papi jugara con nosotros así?" Yeah. And again, not that, not to say that I I had a rough life. Like right. we had everything we wanted, but that little piece wasn't there. Yeah. So I'm always like, and to going back to what you said about you know you know your brothers guiding them, I always tell you know me and my girl would talk about it's like, hey, if we have kids. Like, my dad gave me a better life than the one he was given, right? With little times that, you know, he wasn't there for the most part, uh, but he took care of us. But I feel like we need to learn from that right. to give our kids a better life. It won't be perfect because right. we're going to lack somewhere. Of course. But as long as we keep pushing, hopefully at some point down generations, we won't be able to see it. But maybe our kids will give their kids a way better life because now we'll be like, okay, I want to give you everything y'all want, everything y'all need, including my time. Right. And... And yeah, it's 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 crazy. The other side of the coin here, and like, you didn't think this was normal. When yeah. I was like, "Well, shit, I didn't think that was normal." Yeah. I was like, "What the fuck happened <laughs> yeah, here?" Nah, that, that's just yeah. crazy. It's, it's true, man. That's why, like, and, and it's crazy how you say that, man. Because like, I've had I've had this, this you know, I've had, I've had conversations with, with my girl about this. It's just kind of like, fuck, like, you know, it, when I get to think about it a lot, because I mean, I don't have kids yet. You know what I'm saying? She ain't got kids either. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just think about it sometimes, and I'm like, fuck, like. You know, it kind of scares me being a father, you know, because I'm like, fuck, what if I fuck up? Or what yeah. if what if I end up turning into, like, what I think a father is? You know, even though I know better, but it's just kind of like, kind of like how you were saying, like, uh, 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 about the, like, you know, how, how you know, you, you go on your, you know, you, you're trying to lose weight and you kind of get into this, okay, we're, we're, we're doing this, I'm going to eat like this, I'm going to do like that. But it's just so easy to just fall back into it. Yep. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's it just took like... took me a year to lose 100 pounds, took me three months to gain them. It, it, you know this, this is crazy, bro. And so it's just kind of like, I be, I be thinking You know what's wrong, but... Yes. Yeah. It, you, it's like, I know I know how I could be better, but will I slip into that? Like, it, I'm scared to, like, fall yeah. into that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, man, it's, it's crazy to think about. Because, you, like you say, you know what's right. Yeah. You know you know what's right, but yeah. it's just like, you know. Um, But, but I do think, you know... Hopefully your experience that you've had here recently and sobering up and stuff like that, I feel like that goes a long way. And now you're going to know how to how to deal with other things. Yeah. Because the fact that you realize you had a problem and you had to put your pride to the side and go get help. Right. Like that that just shows that that you're willing to admit to stuff now more easily yeah, than and previous. Yeah, and grow, man. And that, grow, that was yes. my, That was my main thing. Like I That's a big to step. Grow, you know what I'm saying? For growth. And... and I mean, shit. I mean, I've I haven't I haven't said it out loud, you know. But um, I mean, I'm gonna say it right here. You know, I I I recently started to drink again. You know what I'm saying? Um, definitely not how it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, and definitely not as you know. I used to drink daily. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm drinking every other weekend. You know, or, or whenever I go out to eat or something like that. You know, and 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 um, whenever I, now that I am again, sometimes when I uh, get angry or sometimes when I'm I'm this and that I I it it's calling me way harder because now that I that I went back to it like, like I said of course not how I used to be but now that I went back to it and I and I and I and and it's part of not part of my life but it, it I I I tasted it again I I can feel the the tug yeah you know what I'm saying back then I didn't feel the tug it was just like oh okay fuck you know what I'm saying so it's just like now it's just kind of like Oh, okay, I feel like this. I'm gonna just go to the gym. What do I need? You know what I'm saying? I don't. It's fucking Wednesday. What do you, I'm not gonna do that? You know what I'm saying? Or like, yeah. it's just like, okay, we're going out to eat. Or 
Okay, I had me too. Boop, boop. Okay, go home. Boop, boop. Back then, it, it didn't used to be like that, but it was just kind of like, no, I'm drinking on the way home, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Not so. It's just like you know, I'm, 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 I've learned from it, and I feel like it wasn't even a, a, a thing of the drink, man. It was me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what a lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't realize is that I could have sat here and be like, I could have sat here and, and been like, that was the problem, the drink. The yeah. drink was the problem. No, the problem was the drinker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The drinker. You know, so it's just like people drink. You know, motherfuckers sit here and drink daily and just chill. You know, yeah. and, and 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 shit like that. Like, so it was just to me, it, it was just kind of like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it right. You know, and 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 I feel like it's it's a challenge as well because you know when you're not doing it, it's just like you're on this path. Blah, 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 blah. Now that now that I'm doing it again. It's this. It's the same way, but it's like this time you're identifying that tug, that yeah. pull, and this time you know. So this time it's not like fuck it, I'm gonna do it, or fuck it, I'm gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like you you recognize it, you know it. So here's the real. You know, you prepared yourself, kind of like a preparing for this. You know what I'm saying? So how long were you sober for? I was sober for a year and a month. Okay. A so month. I asked that to ask you this: you weren't scared when you took that first sip, like. Uh, here I go again. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. I was like, man, this is either going to make me or break me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, no, I'm going to either make me or break me. This shit ain't got nothing to do with it. I was standing at that fucking beer for like an hour, bro. I swear. <laughs> I promise you, bro. I promise you, bro. It was, it was right there. And I was, that bitch got hot and everything, you yeah. know? And I was just like. I am gonna make me or break me. Not that. Yeah. That shit. When I die, that shit's gonna. They gonna keep making that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. That shit ain't got no attachment with me or my heart or my soul. I'm like, okay. So, grab me the first one I drank. That shit was disgusting, bro. I don't even drink Corona no more like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's weird. You know, it, it's strange. You know. But I, I drank it. And I was like, what the fuck? And then once I started feeling a buzz. I was like, fuck, I feel fat. I feel like slow. Like, I really didn't like it. Yeah. And I was like, how the fuck was I drinking this for so long? You know what I'm saying? So I caught my little buzz, whatever, blah, blah, blah. After that, next day, went about my business. You know what I'm saying? And and after that, you know, every other weekend, you know, grab a drink when I'm out, you know, whatever. I don't really like to drink beer anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I drink, like, mixed drinks and stuff like that. But, um... You know, of course, uh, whenever we're, we're 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 celebrating something or some, you know, I'm with my my girl's family or something. You know, we're we're, we're all together. You know, taking shots or whatever. But um, but yeah, man, it's it's. Speaking of norm, ain't it funny how we've made it the norm to let's get drunk to celebrate? Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's like, crazy. why do we do that? I I don't know, bro. Like, and it's not like it's a good feeling. You feel like shit. Exactly. The next day, but it's just I feel like it's I feel like it's a, like an icebreaker, like kind of like to break. Like, if you have a room full of drunk people, not drunk people, let's say buzz, a room full of buzz people, the conversations can go anywhere, like yeah. this, like this. You might not it, now not not a room full of buzz people that know each other. A room full of yeah, buzz randoms. people that are random. The, the conversation go anywhere like this. You put a, a bunch of random people, the same random people in a room. They're going to be like this. Sober. Everybody's going to be on their phone. Yeah, exactly. Looking, looking exactly, around on exactly. their phone. Exactly. So I, yeah. feel like, I feel like that just became kind of like a like something to loosen up. Like yeah. WD-40, man. Just loosen that bitch up. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a WD-40. You just loosen yourself up. So, so while, while you were getting sober, you took a break from social media. Uh-huh. You took a break from music, period, in a way. You, yeah. you say you were still writing. No, but, I was still writing. But, but you, you really weren't out here putting stuff out or recording. Nah. Were you, were you recording? I I did record maybe. So you you were more like behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of speak low key. Yeah, yeah very, it, very, very, very. You, you were low key about stuff. Okay, yeah. how did this break from music help you, if any? Because I know, I know, once once you live, you know, the way you were living, you know, doing doing these concerts and constantly mm -hmm. being drunk and performing, mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of messes with your mental health in a way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So people don't talk. And people, I'm sorry, people don't talk about that enough. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Which I feel like needs to be talked about way more. But Cause, continue. Because there's an expectation, right? Yes. An expectation of, of your performance. Of course. And I guess since we're here, how, how did it affect you? You know, going from 
Because I remember, you know, when we interviewed the first time, you told us how you were working at the refinery. You got the text. Next thing you know, you're doing concerts every day. Yeah. How did that change your 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 mental health from Alan, you know, the Castro Escobar that was more low key, yeah, to the Castro Escobar being everywhere and having these expectations of? Uh, you talking about after from like being like taking this break to after? No, uh, well, uh, I want to start from the beginning. Like, oh, how, from, the, how did, from how whenever did it affect, I was okay. Yeah. So, how did it change you? The, the thing was, the thing was this, man. My my change wasn't like, um, and a lot and a lot of people don't know this. Most people don't know this. But my change wasn't just like, oh, okay, this is happening. I'm gonna go to California and, you know, pursue this. No, I wasn't like that, man. My 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 thing was kind of like, okay, um, I'm getting very dizzy at work. I'm falling. I'm I'm losing weight. I'm dropping. 10, 20 pounds. That's because of your vertigo? Because of my vertigo. Vertigo is a motherfucker, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, man. And so I have this thing called Meniere's disease, which is a very rare disease, and they have no medicine for it. They have nothing. That, they don't really know much about it. So I don't have insurance. You know, they I, I know the motherfuckers didn't want to sit there and play with me, you know what I'm saying, or, or fuck with me because they knew I wasn't going to pay. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Charge it. I'll pay later. Yeah, shit. nah, hey, that shit wasn't going to work. Ain't shit. no later. <laughs> so, um, so, um, I got to let go, bro. I got to let go because of that. You know what I'm saying? And um, so it was kind of like I was losing everything. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just go over here and do this, you know? Once I left, or before I left, bro, my mom called me. And, you know, my grandfather had just died. And my mom called me. And she was like, hey, I have breast cancer. I'm on stage four. Like, they, I'm, we're doing emergency uh, surgery, this and that. So I'm just kind of, I'm going crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck. I lost my house. I lost my my car. Bro, I love my car, bro. I always talk about that bitch ass car. Like I loved my car, bro. What, what car was it? Was it? A Challenger, man. I had a Challenger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so my fuck, bitch man. ass car. Yeah, that motherfucker. Carro, we get things on <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody's driving the fuck out that bitch right now, bro. They repo uh, that motherfucker. But you know, uh, I was just kind of like fuck it. Like like I'm 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 gonna just chase it, you know. And I went with nothing. I I maxed out my credit card. I asked for a loan and. Fucked up my credit. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to be a rapper. You know, in my head, I'm like, fuck it. But I really had that ambition, that hunger, that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was, I was I always like that because music was my life. And, you know, of course, I started, you know, touring. And, you know, uh, I was fortunate, very fortunate for, for, for them to give me an opportunity to tour. Uh, and um, during that whole time, my mom is doing this chemotherapy. And, you know, she I try to call her every day, every other day. Talk to so, her. so sorry to interrupt. Uh so your your mom got to witness you performing yes. and stuff. Yes. Well, not yeah, that's awesome. Like yeah, yeah, know, not she, not really. But she but she, but she, but she, she knew. She's seen on on social media on Facebook. Hey, that's dope. And that's all dope. That. I feel like our parents need to see us do yeah. at least at some point in their lives see us do something like this. So, yeah, that's well, awesome. Without, she, yeah, she she she, she got told me. She, yeah, she told me. She was like, man, I'm, I'm very happy that you're doing your thing. You know, and I want at one point I, I was like, man, I'm gonna stay with you. You know what I'm saying? She was like, no, mijo, tú tú ves, es lo que quieras hacer. Tú échale ganas, vas a seguir adelante. Quiero que quiero que quiero que le sigas. You know? Like, okay, cool. And then but. Every other day, I would hear her voice kind of, ah, uh, or she would send me texts, you know, and I'd be in the bus or the van, and I'd just cover my head, bro, and I'd be fucking crying because my mom was literally telling me that she can't, you know? So I'm like, fuck, like, you know, and I'm like, come on, mom, todavía ni te ha los nietos, like, tienes que seguir, echale ganas, aquí estoy por ti, ya sabes que luego va a regresar, blah, blah, blah. So she had her last chemotherapy, and uh, I had flown back. She was supposed to be here. She wasn't here because she was doing her chemotherapy in Mexico. So when I got here, she wasn't here. Second day, she wasn't here. Third day, she wasn't here. My dad calls me. My dad. And my dad has always, I hate to say it, but my dad has always been kind of negative. You know what I'm saying? He's like, ah, to my mind. Blah, blah, blah. But in my head, it's just kind of like, this fool is always, you know, being yeah. negative in a way. So I'm just like, okay, cool. I chill. And then the next day, that's when my uncle calls me. And he's like, Alan, ven para acá, para pa que estés con tu mamá. Um, Yo creo le da más ánimo que estés tú aquí con ella, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like, pásamela. He's like, no puede hablar. So I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, my mom can't talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then, mind you, she's she's not over here. She, she's over there. And, you know, my family, they're moving around because Hurricane Harvey had just took everything out. You know, yeah. so their house, our house was fucked up. You know, my dad's house fucking flooded five, six feet. And that's when I really had lost everything because I didn't have no clothes anymore, no nothing. Like everything that was there, everything was washed out, bro. Like fucking crazy shit. Like, so, well, you remember Hurricane Harvey, how yeah. bad it was, bro. So, you know, I go over there and um, 
of course I see her, you know, very sick. And I was with her for her last two, three days, two and a half days. And after that, it's kind of like, I'm, I, in my head, and, and still to this day, I've, I, I've talked about it plenty of times, it's just kind of like, I will never forgive myself, even though I know I need to, and I know God does everything for a reason, you know, but I feel like if I would have been there for my mom instead of went out there and touring, I feel like my mom would have still been here, you know, and I, and I always have that in, in the back of my head, you know, and um, after that, bro, well, you know, my mother was my life, you know, and I always talk about my mom, I always mention her, I always, you know, my songs, everything, you know. So whenever she passed, I just remember the ride back from Mexico was silent, man. Like, like it was just, you know, and then when we got over here, we got home to a house that was pr pretty much destroyed. You yeah, know? like to make you know, matters worse. Yeah, so I'm over there, you know, breaking down the wood and, you know, I'm helping my dad and everything. We're burning everything down and I'm just thinking in my head like, bro, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? You know, so... I blame my music for a long time, and I was just like, fuck, if I wasn't out there doing what I always dreamed of, my mom would still be here. So for a while, bro, like, I didn't want to make music. I wanted to stop, bro. Like, I wanted to stop, you know? And um, that's when I made um, Fidel Snack. I dropped it, like, three months after. So right after my mom passed, three months after, because I dropped it on the first day that we, we were back on the road, um, I... Um, Three months after my mom passed, like I'm, I'm just out there in front of a crowd again, you know. And when I should have taken time for myself, it should have went to therapy, should have talked yeah. to someone, should have put the drink down, should have, you know. Instead, I was doing the opposite. I was numbing everything, you know. I was doing. Man, a bunch and you know of what's shit, so man. crazy about what you're saying, bro? I remember um, when my brother passed. This is the fucked up side of life, right? That it don't matter what happens. <laughs> Life don't fucking stop for exactly. us. Exactly. It keeps going like, like it you know, like we don't matter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause to life we don't matter. To be honest, the world's gonna keep spinning, man. Yeah, the clouds gonna keep turning, man. And remember, you know, we we you know when my brother passed, we were all you know, you know, sad about it. And I remember my dad told us he was like, "Hijo, animo, animo, cabron," and I was like, "How?" Right. And then he was like, "Let me home." Says, "I'm going to but la vida sigue." He's like, tu hermano no, no te va a querer mirar así. And it was like, fuck, man. Like, at the time, it was kind of, I remember I, I took it personal. I got kind of upset about it. Right. And I would talk about, like, how selfish of my dad to want me to just move on. Right. You know what I mean? And then here recently when he passed, it hit me. And I was like, fuck, he was right. Because, you know, when my brother passed, it hit me a certain way. Right. When my dad passed, it fucked me up. It was a whole different story. And then I sat there and thought of those words. I was like, he's right, though. Because he wouldn't want me to sit here and just bum it out, you know what I'm saying, for the next months. And then I started thinking, I was like, I even posted this on Twitter. I was like, life is so fucked up, man. It don't matter what you're going through. That bitch just keeps going. Like, hey, tomorrow, tomorrow's Saturday or tomorrow's Sunday and then Monday. You, you can stay on Friday if you want. Yeah, but it's going to keep But going. real life is going to be on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cold blooded. It's, it's real. So, it's real. And I say that to say, like, you can't blame yourself um, for for what you did because you know, our, first of all, our parents are always, no matter how old we are, we're always our babies, right? right. And they're always gonna want, you know, you said it yourself, like your mom telling you, like, chele ganas, like this is what you want. Yeah. She, she would have never wanted you to take a break. Exactly. However, you do know that you needed that break for your own mental health. Yes, I didn't realize it till yeah. years after, but yeah, you know. So how did how did taking this break years later? help you as not just as a person but as an artist man as an artist i'm gonna tell you like this man as i'm gonna tell you first as a person then as an artist as a person man i i found out a lot of things about myself that i didn't even know you know i found out why i feel a certain way at certain times uh um how um you know just Simple things that I feel like are right in front of our faces, but we don't ever realize it. Like, why do I like to, uh, uh, fuck, what's one thing that I do? Why do I look at myself and, and look have to look at my feet first before I look at my, my you know what I'm saying, like my, my eyes? Or yeah. why do I have to move my face like this or move up and down, like to, you know, before I leave out of the house or, 
or why do I look up or or why do my nose flare why does my nose flare up when I'm angry or or why does like you know why do I bite my nails you know and shit like that so it's just like when you have time for yourself and when that's all that's the only time that you have is your time not Instagram not Twitter not nothing you know but just time for yourself you start being like I bite my nails because why do I bite my nails because I get nervous okay cool why else do I bite my nails Whenever I see that they're getting long, not necessarily just because they're never. And I'm always thinking to myself, it's just, that's just who I am. That's just, you know, so it's just like, I get, whenever I start biting my nails, I'm either nervous, I'm about to do something, or when I see these bitches just get long enough to where I fucking just, it's a <laughs> yeah. fucking bad habit, bro. My mom used to tell me all the time, like, you know, whatever. Or then I'll be like, I'll be outside and I'll be like, why do I, why do I shake my legs? Whenever, oh, you know, bro. And I'm, oh, you're shaking. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Certain shit, just everything. So it's just like, I, I thought about so much shit, like, that I do, simple shit. Like, why do I stretch my arm like this? Or why do I walk the way that I walk? Or what? You know what I'm saying? So then it got to the point where I was kind of, I was like, okay, why do you drink, Alan? Why are you drinking? You're not drinking to celebrate anything because you show sh- sure ain't uh, uh, conquered or accomplished anything anytime recent. Why are you drinking? So then I kind of just wrote down. I started, that's when I started to write shit down. I started to write shit in a calendar. I started to write shit in a journal. I started to write little, every single thing, man. I started to write it down. And I realized you're drinking because you want to be able to let out these feelings. You're drinking because this is your outlet to be able to say, fuck the world. I don't give a fuck about nobody. The world fucking hates me, and, you know, they took my mom away. This shit ain't fair, like, to let my anger out or to be, uh, 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 it was, it was kind of like a, that, you know, just kind of oh, an outlet to be able to be like, well, fuck this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, because in my head, it was just kind of like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and wake up one morning and, you know what I'm saying? go out and and just even though I'm I'm feeling it even though I'm 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 I feel it inside or whatever I'm not going to sit here and be like fuck y'all fuck the shit fuck everything you know because it's not right you know yeah. what I'm saying so in my head I'm like okay if I drink this it'll make me feel better and maybe I won't have but it wasn't making me feel better it was just re- literally making me go out and saying fuck y'all fuck the what you know what I'm saying so it was just like that you already you, knew you sure yes <laughs> so it was just kind of like you're drinking to let these emotions out. You're not drinking to celebrate anything. You're not drinking para convivir con el, you know, con el vecino or fulano or whatever. You're not doing that. Like, you're not drinking to catch a nice buzz and go to sleep. Like, yeah. you're drinking because you feel bad and you don't know how to let it out. And then whenever you do get drunk, you're letting it out in the wrong ways. So I was like, fuck, you know, that, that helped me as a person. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of things, too. Like, I, I got real close to God, man. You know, I, I, I've been slacking. I was like, I, I have, I, I'll admit that. But man, during my whole break, man, I, every single night, bro, I will take 30 minutes and, and I'll pray. I will pray for everybody around me, for for, for um, even people that had problems with me, people that didn't like me, people that, you know, I prayed, I prayed for them as well. I, I, I still do, you know, not like I used to every single night, but I still keep up with it, you know, and I gave him thanks every single day um, and, and. One thing that I would always ask was for patience, and 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 I would ask him to help me understand, yeah. because I feel like, you know, a, a lot of this pain and a lot of, um, not necessarily just pain, but a lot of things that we do wrong are because we don't understand them. So it's just like I wanted I wanted help to understand why is this going on or why is this happening, and why am I like this? Like help me understand every day was a new day for me to learn something or be better in a way and this and that. And 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 that's exactly what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, as an artist, man, um, I, I, I really don't think that that break was as far, uh, like, for uh, my artist side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it definitely did show me that I don't have to be on any kind of drug or any kind of... Uh, Man, I'm a talented motherfucker yeah, even like, when I'm not drinking. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't need no Adderall for this shit. Like, I don't need to be on this. I don't need to do that. I don't need to smoke. Like, I'm over here writing some hard shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm just, 
and I'm keeping it to myself. Like I'm not putting it out on Instagram and you know I'm just writing it. And I remember going to to Max Max uh, Max crib to record uh, these songs. And shout out Mac the engineer. Um, and I'm going in there, and uh, he's like, "What's up, fool?" He's like, "Damn, you look skinny. Yeah, you lost that beer belly. Blah blah blah." He's like, "Damn, that shit. You looking good, boy." Blah blah blah. So I get there, I'm recording. And he's like, what the fuck? Nigga, what you doing? Like, ah, like he's just going crazy. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. Nigga, that's what I'm talking about. That's what you should have been on. Nigga, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, shit, like, that's crazy because I wrote that shit in 30 minutes. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try to be honest. <laughs> it just came out, you know? So it, it, I guess it, it, it also helped me to realize, like, bro, you don't need to do all this shit to, yeah. you know, to, to write or to be in front of a camera or to be. In the studio, like, you know, like, I used to go to the studio. I would not go to the studio. If I didn't have anything to drink, bro, alcoholic beverages, I would not be in the studio. Never, never, ever, ever. This whole past year since I've been in the studio, bro, this whole time, bro, every single time, no uh, no alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Straight, sober, straight, you know what I'm saying? Going in there, just handling business. And it's just, it's crazy, you know, because I never thought that I would be able to do that. Yeah. Well, I never seen myself doing that, you know. Yeah. Um, so first, you know, it, it's I appreciate that you know you you were you know open to us about the your story. So yeah. Uh, again, I do want to say thank you for opening up. Um, you know, telling us your story, everything that you dealt with. I I did wanted to bring light to to that uh, because I I do you know we talked about it before we started recording that it does help other people that might feel like they don't need help or. It, it seems like selfishly as humans, every time we go through something, we seem to think we're the only ones that are dealing with this. Yeah, bro. You know 100%. I mean? 100%. Uh, and we're talking. Did I hit record on the camera? <laughs> we did. Is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're over here talking. Watch out. I get home and I don't got no footage of this. No, but, uh, but yeah, we seem to think we're the only ones that are going through this stuff. You know what I mean? So, so it's always good to hear... You know, you got your following. There may be somebody that might be dealing with the same thing. Oh, yeah. Like, it's okay to ask for help. And, and, and we all go through certain things of life that make us do certain things. Thankfully, you found the help early and we're able to snap out of it. Make I mean, a change, man. You're still young, so you still got a bright-ass future ahead of you. Yeah. So I do want to say thanks to you uh, for that. No, but, yeah, um, for sure, for sure. No, and, 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 and adding on to that, man, I, I, you know, for anybody who, 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 who does feel that way or, or who does... Um, or, or may like, like I said it before on, on my Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who who may, you know, maybe it it might not be in front of you, but maybe it's just like on the on the side of your head, in the back of your head, kind of like, hey man, this is wrong. You know, listen to that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And 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 look into it, man. I mean, we got this thing called the internet now. You know what I'm saying? That you can fuck is really helpful, yeah. not just to fucking watch stupid shit on YouTube or, or gossip <laughs> on fucking Instagram or Twitter, or talk shit on Twitter. You know, whatever. That shit could be used to fucking, you know, look up some some shit that could help you, you know, yeah. emotionally, physically, uh, 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 mentally, you know, spiritually, man. And, and, you know, just just looking to get in some help because, I mean, you could literally just Google, you know, therapy, you know what I mean? And it, and it could help you or, or look up, you know, shit, man. There, there was videos that I would look up. It would be like motivational videos or, you know, it, I remember one in particular, man, that, that stood out to me so much. And it was like this old, it was uh, it was some old dude that wrote something or, or taught something. And it, the, the title of the video was like, um, how to, the key to being alone or success or some shit like that. Yeah. And it, it just, it really showed me like, yo, like you, like it made me realize like, man, I was scared to like, I was always attaching myself to either drinking or someone or, or a group of people or whatever that I never really got to like, you know, cause I was so thinking, fuck, I don't want to be by myself. Like, I don't want to be by myself. And it's just like, I feel like I was using that as a distraction. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, and, and, you know, that people take for granted how dope it is to spend some time alone. You know what I mean? It's it's myself. I just recently felt it, what it was like to be alone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was, well, when I went to to the Centro Popular, oh, you went I alone? went out there by myself. Oh, no shit. You, you went out there too? So it was like the whole drive, I was thinking, you know, in my thoughts... But I was appreciating every moment of it. Yeah. So I got to the Airbnb. I chilled. I ordered food. I chilled there. I went out to eat by myself. And that shit was kind of dope. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 
as much as people, because I would always hear people like, damn, I'm like, why are you eating by yourself? But, bro. Being chill loser, you know? Yeah, bro, real <laughs> shit. I used to be like, bro, I'm never going to go eat by myself. Like, I feel like, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I would kind of be like, damn, I bet you he's probably like going through something. He, he ain't got no friends. Huh? Yeah, probably, you know, you know, some shit like that. And then I would, I went, I would, because I went out to eat a lot, a, a lot by myself during that break. And I would just be like, damn, like I'm really, no social media, no scrolling through us, no, just sitting down, getting my food, talking to the waitress, drink a water, because I'm, I'm sober, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just kind of like, fuck, you know, two years ago I would have been like, yo, you whack as fuck. How the fuck can you yeah. do that? You know what I'm saying? But I was appreciating everything, just kind of like, you know, Everything, man. It's just, and also, what I forgot to mention was, you know, my boy Eric, man. I made a whole, like I said, I, I, I had did a whole song about him. It's called Eric's Wisdom. He made, he really um, helped me a lot, bro, because he he told me he's like, bro, like you outside, bro, like you get to see the trees, bro. He was like, man, the other day I saw a fucking bird fly to my window. That was the best shit I've ever seen. And I'm like, oh, it's fucked up. If you think, put I'm it like, that a way, bird, bro. Like we, I see these bitches, I. These bitches shit in my car. On my shit car, that you know? we take for granted again. Exactly, bro. Yeah. So it was just like I was just kind of like you know every day I would talk to him, I would talk to him, you know, and I would I would I would, I would video call him and what's up, bro? Like I'm glad you're doing good, bro. Bye, yeah. And it, it, it's crazy how much of an impact he did to me, even just being there. Yeah, man, you know, and it made me appreciate everything from waking up and being able to go to the restroom and wash your face, bro. There's people that don't have fucking don't, water. Can't do that. They can't <laughs> do that exactly. Or being able to go to work, come home and. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, make you know some people make a thousand dollars a day. Some people make fucking a hundred. But uh, yeah. you know you coming home and making something and, and being able to provide or, or to eat or to you know pe some people can't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that too also you know helped me so much, man. And and it's just you know back to what you were saying, man. I I wanted to share it with everybody because it can inspire. It can inspire sure. and it could definitely help, man. And and and. Before, like, like I've always, I've always said this, even back then, or even before, like since I was like seventeen, man, I always said, before I leave this earth, I want to be able to to provide something before I leave out of here. I don't give a fuck if it's something small, if it's something big, but I want to be able to, for somebody to be able to say, Castro helped me with this. Well, Castro helped me do. Stop that. it you know right there, because you you have been giving shout outs to everybody that they helped me with this, they helped me with that. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that when you first came back on social media, mm -hmm. uh, that, I had just lost my dad like a couple weeks before that, I believe, or maybe a month or so. And mm -hmm. then you you went live and you started talking about how you were sober and why you you had been gone for so long. And I reached out to you. So that since you've been thanking everybody, I want to say thank you because. Once we we chopped it up on Instagram and you know you just told me you know this that's what it's like you know I can't remember exactly what we said but we talked right. about me losing my dad right. and then we started sharing the story you know what happened with your mom and then a couple months after that well right after that I told my girl I was like hey I talked to Castro and he was telling me this he said I need to look for help like he he because I was fresh out of my dad's death you know what I mean so right. at the time I'm fucked up like I told you I couldn't sleep right. you know what I right. mean um so that that was step one of me trying to look for help right. And then one time I was I was driving and you called me and we talked on the phone for like an hour I believe yeah and then that is when I actually went online and looked for help and tried to do my research like I said I, I haven't done it but it sparked the interest of like hey if he's Going telling me and, this is what it did for him like yeah. he can do it for me yeah so you know again I always speak on on the show on this one and the buffet boys I always talk about how it's important to give people's flowers so I just want to give your flowers and I want to say I appreciate you that that Thank you you, man. you know. A lot of people w wouldn't want to speak on it, but the fact that you took the time to come out on social media and just tell your story, it hit me. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, maybe I need help. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to find my you know, my scapegoat, which right. I was trying to get drunk, right. which is what you were trying to get out of. Yeah. yeah. And I was trying to get into it to, to thinking that was the solution. Nah, man, it, it, it isn't, man. Yeah, you know? so, so I just want to say thank you. You know what I'm saying? Nah, thank, sure, uh, you know, thank, thank you for, for coming out and speaking without even knowing that, I, you know, I was going to listen to it or it was going to even affect me in any way. Right. So, so again, thank you for that. Sure, um, man. Thank you. But so all this, this big break that you took. And again, we know we recently had, had your first performance in a long time. Mm -hmm. You had your, uh, your, the single with, uh, with, uh, XB. Mm -hmm. You got a new single coming out. 
with uh, OT, the Mexican OT. Shout out to the Mexican OT, Shout by out the way. that Mexican OT, man. Uh, you, you got a single that? coming out with him. Talk mm-hmm. to us about that single. Uh, when is it dropping and, and dropping all that good October stuff? October 31st, man. You know, me and OT go, go way back, man. It, uh, a lot of people don't know it. I mentioned it uh, to people that I say, but I've never said it like out out in in in, in a podcast or in social media or anything. But um, OT's uncle, Big Mo, shout out Big Mo, shout out Kick though. Um, he's the one who really got me started in this rap shit. He's the one who he opened his doors and his house. He stays in West Columbia. He stays over there where I'm at. And uh, he'd be like, "Hey, Mexican, you pull up, Mexican, whatever you need, Mexican. Like you 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 five, man, you five. Just come in here, record whatever you. Like, we used to stay in his house at like six in the morning." Just recording in his in his house, you know what I'm saying? He'd be like, "Handle the mess, can do your thing," and we would fucking record. Uh, we would uh, put blank CDs and just put everything, everything. And we, it was, I, it was me, Javier, Chava, Bean, and and Chino. Shout out my boy. Shout out all my boys out there, um, aka Drew Pacino. Um, and we would we all bought a bunch of CDs. And Shout they out would, to Drew. We are supposed to do his interview a long ass time ago. Where's he at? He hasn't done one in it? Nope. Oh, you tripping. I'm going to get on his ass. That's what you said. Yeah, so we, um, we, um, we all grabbed a bunch of blank CDs and we just literally making copies of it, writing in each one of them, putting it on, on, um, on, um, on, uh, the slip thingies, on the, yeah, on the, the paper sleeves. slip. Yeah, sleeves on the sleeve, but the paper ones, the ones where you see the, only the yeah. front. And ev- and in the back, write the list of the songs. Pass them out for free, bro. Just you know, and he, and and he opened he opened uh, the doors for me. And uh, I just remember one time seeing this little this little kid doing backflips in the back. Oh, hyper as fuck. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm such and such. Uh, I don't even remember what he told me, but then he started rapping, and then all I started hearing was, and I was like, "Who the fuck is this little kid?" He was, "Oh, that's my nephew, Mexican. He from Bay City, bro." He'd be like, "Yeah, bro." And he was just so hype. So, you know, when I had left, um, I would see that Big Moan uh, would record him rapping. And, you know, it had been years since I had heard him, you know, rapping when he was like little, you know. Yeah. And he just, I would just hear him and he was just, yo, is that that Mexican OT? And I was like, hey, yo, this kid got skills, man. Like, this fool's spitting, like, for real, for real. So um, I reached out to him again. He was like, what's up, Mexican? You know, and then he was like, what up, bro? Like, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he was there with his girl, with his people. He was like, man, I remember this fool used to come over here. You know, this Mexican used to come over here to my uncle's house. He used to record this and that. So then we, we had already made, like, we had already made a couple of tracks. And we yeah, because y'all been on each other's projects oh, already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, and uh, 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 so last year, or no, the uh, earlier this year, he was like, hey, Mexican, I got a feature for you. I was like, bro, send it my way, and we need to get it out. Like, we need yeah. to do it because we've been talking about this. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's way overdue. So he sent it. I wrote my verse. I went to uh, I went to over to, uh, record over there at Press Play Studio. Shout out my boy C4 out there in uh, B County. Um, and um, you know I, I recorded it, did it. He he got it back. He was like, "You killed the mask, and we gonna do a video to this." Uh, I was like, "Let's do it, bro. Let's do it." You know. So I go up to his crib. He's got a bunch of shit. He's got his shit set up. Like that boy hungry, man. That boy hungry, and I love to see it, man. I love to see it. Cause he's from you know my area, yeah. man. You know, and and usually, of course, most artists are coming from the Houston, Houston area. You know what I'm saying? But it's just it feels just so good to be able to see somebody from like where I'm, like my little you know area, country country area, to be doing their thing. You know, so he he was he just had the whole crib like set up like ready like he was like, hey, we're gonna record a scene here, we're gonna do this here. That boy got his you know everything just ready, and I'm just like. Damn, bro, like that reminds me of me when I was like younger, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then I'm, you know, it's like he's inspiring me to really get back on my shit, you know, as much, he probably don't even know, but he, I'm like, bro, like, I remember how I used to be, you know what I'm saying? And of course, like, we, we talked about right now, so much shit happened and, you know, it, it, it just fucked with my mental a lot, you know? But, um, but yeah, we recorded the video, man. We, we, we was out there just getting it, you know what I'm saying? You know, re, re, uh, uh, um, having fun with it and everything. And he was like, "Hey, best can appreciate you blessing me with a, blessing me with a, a, a verse, baby. You already know, like we got it, bro." <laughs> and I'm like, "Man, you already know it's all love, bro. I got you, man. Like for sure, for sure." So he uh, recently I talked to him, and I was like, "Bro, you putting all this music out?" I was coming back from uh, drive. Uh, uh, we was driving back from Cali, and he hit me up, and he was like, um, "What you doing, Mexican?" I was like, "Shit, I'm driving back." He was like, "What you doing out there?" And then I told him, "Whatever." And he was like, hey, I'm about to send you this track, baby. Let me know what you think. So he sent me a track. I already knew he was going to kill it, you know. Send me the track. Heard it. And that's when I hit him back. I was like, hey, bro, 
You releasing all this fucking music. When the fuck is you gonna release the fucking yeah. song that we did, bro? Like, yeah, I, I, did I'm, you not like my verse? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, bro, what's happening? He was like, October 31st, we dropping it. Let's do it. But I was like, all right, cool. So October 31st, me and OT, the Mexican OT, we dropping. Azul. 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 Blue in Spanish. Azul. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out, shout out that Mexican OT, man. That boy killer, man. That boy gonna, yeah. hey, that boy gonna be something, man. Yeah. So, um. Now on top of this single. On the fifteenth, you're dropping a project. Yes, Fidel's leftover. Fidel's leftover. So I'm excited to hear this because I feel like, in the state of mind you've been this last couple of years, I feel like we're gonna hear, not literally hear everything you went through, but we're gonna hear what you went through in this project. Am, am I wrong, or, or what can we expect on this project? Well, listen, man, I'm gonna tell you like this. If you would have heard Fidel's dinner, maybe. But we listening to some leftovers. So, why I, why did I name this project for Dead Leftovers? I'm going to tell you like this. I had these songs. I was supposed to drop the project. I had completed my project the week that this big incident happened to where I decided to disappear. I had a couple of songs on there. And I never did because, of course, I disappeared. So, I was going to throw them away. I was just going to throw them away. I was just going to say, fuck this shit. Like, fuck all this, you know? Like, I, I didn't even want to do music anymore, whatever, cool. I just wanted to do it for fun. And I was showing everybody. I was showing everybody, like, look, bro, this is what I was going to drop. I was showing my girl. I was showing my my, my, my fam, my, my my people. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? When, when, when did you do this? Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, this happened, like, like, the same week when all that shit went down. It was like, why haven't you dropped it? I'm like, I ain't going to drop it. They're like, bro, you fucking tripping. Like, you bought all these beats. Like, you put all this together. You got all this mix and master. Like, you just gonna fucking throw it away? Like, and I'm like, the fuck I'm supposed to do with it? They're like, put it out. I was like, fuck no. I'm not gonna put it out. And then somebody said something about, shit, well, if it's your leftovers, just say Fidel's leftovers. And I was like, Fidel's leftovers. I like the way that sounds. Yeah, because it's like Fidel's breakfast, Fidel's lunch, Fidel's snack. These are really leftover songs because I was really just going to throw them away. Yeah. They're leftovers. Why don't I just drop a project called Fidel Leftovers? You know, show some appreciation. I haven't dropped anything since the snack. Yeah. You know, a project, a full project since the snack. I was like, you really going to make these people wait next year till, till you drop, you know, that other project that you was going to do? And then I was like, nah, I need to give it. I need to yeah. give it to them. So it's not, it does have a couple songs on there. I mean, I'm, I'm spitting, you know, I'm spitting. Uh, it does have a couple of songs on there that are that are that are um, man. That, that, I'm, I'm gonna tell you one in particular. It's called um, uh, Twenty Five Problems, um, and um, that one is a uh, is is very um, dark. You know what I'm saying? That one um, I did. If if you if you if it does really talk about you know how I feel. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That one and um, of course a couple other ones. Um, where I'm just really, you know, not, 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 it's not dark, but I really am speaking on some real life shit, you know what I'm saying? And then, of course, uh, uh, there was, you know, some, some other ones where I'm having fun and I was literally just like going in, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and then turning up and, you know, just, just having my phone with it. But it, it's not something to where, um, it's not something to where it's just like, oh man, like this is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, here. I need to give this to you because I know you've been waiting for something like this from me. Yeah. And I know that you like this because, you know, if my people or my people that have heard it are like, yo, you need to drop it, then I know that. I need to drop this. I need to drop <laughs> this. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I mean, I, I definitely, um, like I say, I got about 12 to 15 tracks that are ready for my next project already. Because, like I said, these, I wasn't going to drop these, bro. And I was just going to wait till December to drop. What could have potentially been Fidel's dinner? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, so Fidel's dinner is gonna have to wait a little bit longer now, huh? Yeah, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't really wanna. I feel like Fidel's dinner, like it has to end there. So I wanna end nicely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, unless maybe we have some midnight snacks or something. I don't know, you know, but or dessert or I don't know, you know, but you know, it, it, it's it's coming. It's definitely in the works. It's definitely, like, I need to send you some tracks, bro, so you can hear some. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
But yeah, man, it, it's it's nice. It's solid. I know people are gonna fuck with it. I've never really been confident about my own craft, or or I'm very self conscious about my craft. But I know that the people that fuck with me are gonna enjoy this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's October 15th, Fidel's dinner. Uh, Fidel's uh, leftovers. leftovers. Yeah, don't say I'm dinner, man. About <laughs> dinner <already. laughs> Fidel's Fidel, leftovers. Fidel's leftover that drops on on um October on the 15th. 15th. And then the Mexican OT, the single Azul, drops on the 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to say, I, you know, I was talking about, yeah, the first single that you dropped was with uh, uh, the first music that you dropped that I thought it was. Yeah, it was with, with XB. XB. But no. actually, you you actually did a verse as well with La Machina and them. Oh, yes. Shout out, shout shout out, out La Machina. GT, Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, the first song I ever dropped when I came back was like a month after I came back on, on social media, yeah. which was Eric's Wisdom. And then I think about two months after that, I dropped uh, Never Alone. Which was, yeah. um, you know, with the music video, and then um, I went. I, I had went out there to Houston to go show love to GT and, and Coast and you know uh, Buns, and then when they were doing a music video, and they were like, "Yo, pull up to the studio tomorrow." So I was like, "All right, cool, that's a bet." So I recorded a verse with them, and I, I ain't gonna bullshit you, man. I thought I thought they wasn't gonna use it, so they put it on the they put it on the yeah. the, the album, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like they put me on, like I was high, you know, because like I I grew up listening to, to GT and and. In Coast, and you know, I mean, I I would hear about Buns, you know, but Coast to me was a big inspiration, you know. So, um, you know, just being able to do that, you know, was a, was a was was an honor, you know. And yeah. then, of course, came the one with SB. So it's just like for me to to have kind of you know still have re re relevance after not even really coming in and just back to back, you yeah. know, it, with the peers and the fans. Yeah, yeah like that's, that's that's crazy to me, honestly. Like I honestly didn't expect that at all, but. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shout, shout out to La Machina, man. Yeah, shout out to them. And, uh, hey, man, well, first I want to say, again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you telling us your your testimony, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, I, I am looking forward to this new music. Uh, again, make sure you stream on all streaming services, I'm assuming. Everything. Yeah, Fidel's Leftovers yeah, on Leftovers. October 15th. Then you got Asul dropping on the 31st. Um and if you're, for some reason, sleeping under a rock, make sure you follow him on Instagram at... Castro Escobar underscore OJ. You know, Twitter, Castro Escobar 9. And, you know, just uh, just Google Castro Escobar shit. Yeah. You'll find me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop up somewhere, yeah, shit. Yeah, I'll pop up somewhere, yeah. shit. But uh, once again, bro, I appreciate you. And, and it, it was dope to have this conversation with you. Um, and any last-minute shout-outs? Uh, shit, just shout-out everybody that's been part of the... Um, Part of the journey, you know what I'm saying? From everybody, from my family, you know, my girl, my 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 my, you know, EC, Javier, my boy Eric, you know, just everybody that's close to me, y'all know who y'all are. It's too many to name, but yeah. you know, I got much love for everybody. I love y'all, man. God bless y'all. Can't name them all because as soon as you miss one, man, you <laughs> forgot about me, bro. <laughs> now, uh, once again, we appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you guys listening. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you follow us on all social media pages at the JVAS Show, and you can find the, the, the link to his social media pages, his YouTube. Uh, Twitter and Instagram on the description of the video, description of the podcast as well. Once again, you're watching the Jay Bass show, and we had Castro Escobar. Right. Hey. <laughs>